Hello everyone, today we're going to talk about Secure Access Services Edge or otherwise known as SASE. First of all, what is SASE? It's effectively security in the cloud or if it's not actually in the cloud, the security feature set is being updated or kept up to date in regard to the latest threats from the cloud. Let me give you an example of SASE and in particular why we're interested in this is with the uptake in SD-WAN, companies are now trying to go with a strategy of internet first type WAN connectivity using an overlay for their SD-WAN. So if I draw some of that in, let's just say that we've got the internet here, which is the underlay. Okay, and then we have a couple of SD-WAN appliances at this site, which are connected and high availability and all that kind of thing. And then we have websites over here. We also have SaaS applications and then we also will have a data center which might then link into an MPLS WAN which has sites that either require MPLS connectivity within them or between them if there's certain sites that need assurance in regard to SLAs between these two separate sites over the MPLS which cannot be provided over the internet then you might still have some sites on MPLS. Regardless of that this is what the infrastructure might look like from an underlay perspective and where we at what we add into the mix here is that what do we actually want to do? That's the first question. We want to get these routers or this LAN to these services and that's what we're going to focus on in this particular video. Now, what we would do initially if I take a purple data flow or a purple traffic flow, um, we would have some sort of IPsec VPN, we could potentially go into the data center and then out to websites like that. What we really want to do now is we want to break out to the internet, to websites, to SaaS applications, and there might be other services that we want to do that over the internet, of course. That's the key component to this. Now, what SaaS is, is instead of tromboning into the data center like this traffic flow that we talked about originally the reason that we would do that is because we want to run our internet access through a centralized location to enforce company security policy with SASE, i'm going to be honest with you it's not that much different the only difference is it's someone else's data center if we say this is the SASE solution here and forget what the boxes look like but it does web filter um, I don't know, anti antivirus malware recognition and detection um, it might also do SSL offload to allow for encrypted traffic inspection and it also could do things like VPN termination and application presentation. And that would be if you were coming from the internet, if you were a user here, you might be coming into this SASE application like this for VPN. And then from there, you can natively access the applications that are up here in the data center. You can see then that SASE is not just a straightforward thing. It's complicated. It's based on multiple layers and dependencies. 
And there's also some limitations around certain aspects of it. When I say limitations, I don't mean in regard to functionality or what it could do. I mean in comparison to having an on-prem solution. Now, if we fast forward a little bit and talk about SD-WAN, we have, let's say we have, this is the SD-WAN overlay. So that's effectively one site and then we have multiple other sites which are connected to the SD-WAN overlay. In reality, they also might have or will have some sort of internet transport. So the traffic flow that I'm about to draw in blue, dashed blue, goes over the overlay, which is like a traditional IPsec or DMVPN or something like that, but it's an overlay-based network. We're not talking about the bells and whistles of SD-WAN in respect to load sharing or application visibility. We're just talking about the underlay overlay routing in this particular scenario. Why you would want the overlay based traffic flow is to securely encrypt your traffic when sites are communicating with each other and also passing the routing information between sites. So if this site is 10.10.10.0 .10 and this one is 10.11.11.0 zero slash 24 that's what we're communicating with over the blue line or the blue dashed line that i drew in which goes in the overlay network the underlay network is the black internet transport and what we do with most sassy solutions these days is we create a GRE tunnel from our SD-WAN routers and this is over, if you think of this going over the black underlay connection and the traffic flow when we're then trying to access websites or SaaS applications or one of the other things from the end users are that we go up here over the red dashed line and whatever one of these features that we require to happen it might be let's just say web filtering for example it executes or it might say let's offload the SSL inspect the packet and then we'll do and execute the web filtering policy and we'll also check for malware when you're downloading files but the main traffic flow is it comes up from this LAN here and then hits the SASE application in the underlay and then hits the websites or then hits the SAS application. So effectively what we're saying here is SASE is someone else's data center who is providing different security services in the cloud it might also be something like firewall as a service in the cloud instead of having particular services coming in through the data center and then out to your sites. It's coming in through the, the SASE application and these are global as well. The SASE applications or uh, the presence of the SASE providers are global. So you can potentially go to the closest SASE, although it's someone's data center, someone else's data center, I should say, you go to the one that's closest to you and your instance of that in order to access your website applications, access your SaaS applications, sorry, I should have said access websites and SaaS applications or potentially infrastructure as a service, but there's performance considerations that you want to think about there. So that's a quick overview of Secure Access Services Edge and some of the integration considerations on uh, this technology when you're deploying in conjunction with SD-WAN. This scenario is not the only way that you can deploy that, but if you want to discuss this further, then feel free to contact us, design team at mnbnetworks.tech, or you can call us on plus 44 131 2100 098.
and we'll be happy to continue the conversation and help your organisation with the adoption of SD1, SASE or anything else that you require assistance with. Thanks for watching, thanks for your patience and I wish you all the best.